Let's thank once again, Ambassador Ralph Thomas, who focused intensely on enterprise risk management uh, from a Caribbean perspective. At this time, we'd like to move straight into one of the features in today's uh, program, which is the Awards for Excellence in Enterprise Risk Management. We would like to uh, welcome once again to the microphone, the president of the Caribbean Risk Management Academy, Mr. Ken Hackshaw, to give us an insight into the award selection process and awardee profile. Okay, so for those of you who are otherwise disengaged, let's re-engage a little bit. So I'm going to disrupt and probably piss off some of my team members. So I'm gonna deviate from the script a little bit only, well, actually a lot, only because I know of why we are here and why we are presenting this award. So um, you guys could curse me, oh Lord, the, the side eyes have already started. Okay, so we have been doing this for a bit. This is our fourth conference. And this is the first time we are awarding a company, um, basically Enterprise Risk Management Company of the Year. Um, the reason why we have not done it before is primarily because CRMA has its own maturity model, risk maturity model that we map organizations to. So we do our own research into the companies. We do a little bit of comparative analysis ensuring we don't do apples, or as Anthony said, carrots to sticks or something like that. Um, it's never a one-to-one -one ratio if we are mapping a Caribbean institution to international institution. But we, 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 we follow up a basic continuum. So, our risk maturity model goes from one to about seven. Okay, fast forward to why we are here. Uh, CRMA was engaged, and I'll leave out some details not to upset the innocent, but to make the guilty feel bad. Oh, by the way, I should start with this, which is something I, I shared with the, uh, the board of this entity. Who can tell me? No, I'll pick on someone. Good friend sitting in front there. So I need you to come to the mic when I ask this question. And I am going to embarrass you. And you guys can help her a little bit. Yes? How many different types of animals did Moses take on the ark? <laughs> well, take a crack at it. Okay, Mr. Chinapu. No one has the answer to this thing. Yes, ma'am. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> oh, was she in the conference? Was she in the meeting? She was not. Okay. So, speaking of different types of thinking, um, when I do training, you must have paid her. When, you, when, we, when we do training um, interventions, a, a big part of what we do is we test the participants. So we don't go in and just lecture. We challenge, upset the norm a little bit, embarrass a few of them, yeah? Not intentionally embarrass, but just to like push them a little bit that they aren't all knowing, yeah? So that was an example of lateral thinking. It's called the illusion of Moses. And um, the, the, the moral behind it is that if one part of your information is incorrect, the entire thing is incorrect. Yeah? Thanks for participating, but I do know you, you have the answer. Um, <laughs> but I know you know the right answer. Exactly. So I, I and Diane go through this all the time. That's why I picked on you. Brilliant. So, <laughs> so, um, so we're here. Uh, about six months ago, or maybe less, uh, as I was saying earlier, we were asked to engage 
the parent board of the Anse McCall group of companies. And so we would have done many board training, executive CEO and, and his team. Uh, but it was the first time that we got the full parent board of an institution to sit down for six and a half hours and go through the abuse of how we train in enterprise risk management. And for that, I give them, and I have, and I will continue to give them kudos for doing so. And when, but when we say full board, we mean full board. Yeah. Notwithstanding that, uh, the fact that a very successful conglomerate decided by themselves to do this speaks values and kudos to the leadership of the organization. Uh, because oftentimes companies believe that we are successful, then we don't need these things. We don't need risk management. Why do we need this? With that in mind, and because of some additional work we did with them, and we continue to monitor their progress in the risk management space, unbeknownst to them, um, this is our first award of excellence in the ERM space. And I am honored and privileged to ask Anson McCall and the CEO of Pasiton to Ms. Francis Bain Kamabach to accept on behalf of the Anson McCall group of companies. Congratulations. One, Francis has to say a few words. Ask Francis to read what it says. 2022 Company of the Year, Excellence in Enterprise Risk Management Certificate of Recognition proudly presented to Ansel McCall Limited for demonstrating leadership, resilience, and agility, and a practical approach to enterprise risk management across a range of industries and at all levels from the boardroom to the front lines. Thank you. <laughs> um, Ken, you almost made me blush there. <laughs> All protocols being observed. Good morning, everyone. It is with great honor and pride that Anse McCall is the recipient of the Award for Excellence uh, in Enterprise Risk Management from the Caribbean Risk Management Academy. The Anse McCall Group has been in existence for 140 years. And in 1986, when our late chairman emeritus made the decision to invest into the McCall Group at the time, it was a risky time to say the least. We had IMF debt to, to, to avoid shortages of foreign exchange. We had high unemployment, high interest rates. Sounds familiar? In not so many words, we've been here and done this. At that time, the McCall Group was making losses. People felt that Chairman Emeritus was crazy to be investing in this company at this time, when there was all this gloom and doom at the end of the first oil boom that Trinidad and Tobago had had. But what he saw was the upside of risk, opportunity, 
that company that was making losses in 1986 started to turn a profit by the next year. And in fact, PBT was around $11 million. By 1988, we were at $13 million. Fast forward, A, to actually 20, let's go back a little bit, 2020, 2021, the pandemic years. We were now a billion dollar PBT, prof, PBT company. So we heard about resilience and, anti, and being anti-fragile. The group has been around for a long time and we've seen a lot, ups and downs. And I think we know just a little bit about being resilient and maybe even the new terminology of today, being anti-fragile. So during that pandemic period that all of us, I think, will never forget, and we spoke about it today, Warren Black said it was something that we knew, we expected, we, or there were people who were talking about it. But because there are so many risks to manage, nobody really prioritized a pandemic and preparing for a pandemic. I remember that time vividly in 2020. And I remember a young but experienced CEO who grew up in the Ansemacal group, grew up around the family table, learning from his grandfather and his father about business and entrepreneurship. Warren Black also spoke about the importance of balancing entrepreneurship as well as governance. We cannot, as we get larger, he noted that compliance is important for companies, but we must not forget the need to be innovative and also be entrepreneurial. I think Ansel McCall has the benefit of both. We are fortunate in that regard. We see opportunity where there is doom, where others see doom. And we balance that off with diligence, care, and really paying attention to detail. So at that time when the pandemic started, we were responsive and we were agile. I know that our CEO at the time, certainly just sitting into office, getting into office the 1st of January, 2020, would not have expected to be at the helm of Ansa McCall and lead us through a pandemic. One of the things that was very, very I should say unforgettable for me. We had these morning meetings, small as well as large, but regularly to deal with the risks at hand. But from very early on, CEO made it very clear that we would not be cutting jobs for us to thrive through this and survive, survive and thrive through this. Why would he do that? Number of reasons. Apparently, that is how we view people. But two, Warren Black also spoke about being prepared, being ready. And one of the things he spoke about is being prepared for a rainy day. Ansa McCall is always prepared for a rainy day based on how we manage our business. Therefore, the first knee-jerk reaction was not to cut jobs. Him setting that tone that people came first, our entire leadership team, more than ever, not that it wasn't there before, but more than ever, we knew that we were in this for something much bigger than ourselves. We had the responsibility to lead this company through a very uncertain time for the benefit of 6,000 employees and their families. 
So Warren also spoke about, or I believe it was Anthony who mentioned leadership at that time in terms of being very important in risk management. So again, we were fortunate to have strong and visionary leadership. The CEO asked us all, the entire leadership team, some of whom are seated here today and are also online, to basically lean in. Lean in, meaning take on more and in, in terms of your portfolios, our portfolios, and for the benefit, and do that for the benefit of us all as a team, as a company, as people. We did not shy away because of the risk at hand, the risk, the serious risk that we were managing. He set expectations for us all that we had to meet and made it very clear when he was not happy, when we didn't meet them. Accountability. That for me is a sign of strength in a leader, which ultimately leads to performance. As we were proud to say in 2021, we were back to pre-pandemic levels of performance. The Anson McCall Group will see ups and downs just as the company, just as the country and the region will see ups and downs. But we will continue to manage with a long-term view. One of the things the CEO asked us to lean into among many others would have been enterprise risk management, where yes, we did have risk management procedures in place, but not as integrated as they are and will be for the future. So again, one of the things one of the earlier speakers mentioned in terms of sharing information, the integrated framework that we have, that we entered into in 2021 and uh, Ken alluded to it, that he was part of that journey, start of the journey will only make us stronger only make us more agile and able to deal with the things that maybe we can't even prepare for. So as we move to the future, there are some things that we have anticipated. For example, our digital bank. We are well on the way in Q3 to be launching the first digital bank in the region. We invested in buying the Bank of Baroda, which was a small, very small, normally run bank, very small market share, but the vision was bigger. And that will be, or is known now as our answer bank and our first, and the first, as I said, digital bank in the region. We mentioned today the importance of legislation to facilitate digital transformation, digital currency. We in Trinidad and Tobago are behind our Caribbean fellows in this regard, in terms of legislation, in terms of the will to move forward. This is coming just as the pandemic was coming. The world was not prepared for the pandemic, although we knew it was coming. Let's not be unprepared for the digital transformation and digital currency. Let's rally and try to catch up with our brothers. Something like the, Car the Carib coin can give us the opportunity to achieve or re re recover what we lost when we tried to form the Federation so many years ago. As the Honorable Prime Minister Mia Motley said at the, recently said at the, um, the Summit of the Americas, the Caribbean, when we, when we make demands or requests for things, for example, electric vehicles, we can't get them because we don't matter. The only way in this new world 
with all of these risks and all of the trouble that she mentioned is through unity that we can survive as a region. Digital currency is one way of helping us to leverage that unity and that strength in terms of trade amongst ourselves and internationally. So I would like to thank the directors and the president and the directors of the Caribbean Risk Management Academy for this award on behalf of Ansa Macal, which validates our dedication to ensure that risk management processes are proactive rather than reactive. And moving towards, as we have today, as we mentioned today, and we're talking about anti-fragility. Thank you very much.